Hey, what's up guys? Rudalinal here, come back at you with another batch tutorial. Alright, now, uh, in the last video, we've been working with, uh, trying to create our own function, our own, like, global tool. And that would allow us to create a string, uh, like a real programming language or scripting language would normally consider a string. Like, we would initialize it with some double quotation marks, uh, we'd be able to find the length, and that was the best part about that script we wrote the other day. Because we were able to find the length, that opened up so many more doors and opportunities that allows us to manipulate the string and the, the variable and the data that we're working with. So, in this video, we're going to keep that theme going, we're going to work with the, uh, the actual length of the string, and we're going to continue to be building our own functions and tools that we can use later on down the road. Because when we have this sort of, like, global toolkit, or, like, all these utilities that we have access to, our programming experience is a, is a lot better, and we have a lot more things that we can do here. So, today, in this video, what I want to introduce to you guys is something called, uh, let's see, arrays. Now, arrays... Uh, are a lot like this way of holding mole uh, data in multiple variables. Because normally when we have a variable, it only has one value. Now, array has the ability and access to store a lot of different r arrays. And we can have information about those variables and that sort of thing. So if I had an array, and uh, let's say it's kind of a lot like a list. Like a list has elements or items inside of it. Now, array can access these elements and items by what we call indexes. But if I had something like a grocery list... And let's say I wanted that grocery list to have apples, bananas, and meat. This grocery list has three elements, but the computer counts them at certain indexes. So apples is zero, bananas is one, and meat is two. When we try and actually access grocery list... Grocery list... Now, normally, the syntax for other programming languages is using these two brackets, and inside them we would use the index that we're actually trying to get at. So... Index 0 would obviously return apples, because that's it up there. But the length of this grocery list is actually three elements. So when we try and access grocery list length, we should get returned three, because that's how many we see here. So we're going to try and build something that allows us to work with this uh, today. We want to be able to create arrays and access them inside of our program and that sort of thing, but we want to make it versatile. We want to be able to create any sort of array uh, and that sort of thing, because when we were actually creating it, what we would do uh, is actually run create array, because that's going to be the name of our function today, and I'll call mine just grocery list, keep it easy. And we'll separate them by commas. How about that? We'll separate each index by commas. So now we're going to supply another string, but we'll have apples, comma, bananas, comma, and then meat. So this is going to be uh, what we're working with. Now the second argument that we're passing in is the separator. We could change this to be a space, and we could use spaces here, and that sort of thing. So we can really build something that's going to be really easy now that we know the length of the string. We can actually loop through it and manipulate it and work with it. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be trying to process and parse this final string here, or the content of the array. So uh, that's enough of me talking. Let's actually get to writing this. I'm going to call mine create array you should too. And we're going to start with our typical add echo off. Now, remember, since we aren't building a, a regular script, this is going to be more of a global tool for us or something that we're going to be able to work with later on. We're not actually going to be using the typical like set local, enable, delayed expansion, and that sort of thing. But we are going to want to be using this idea and the theme of delayed expansion. Now, that might not make a lot of sense to you. We're not actually going to be using this line in our program or code here today, but we're still going to be using variables that use an exclamation point because we want to be actually working with delayed expansion. Now, most of you are probably thinking, well, hey, that won't work. We haven't actually turned it on. Well, the thing is, when we try and run this script inside of another script, so like if we're trying to create an array and we use this inside of another script, if the script that we're initially working with has this turned on, the script right now that we're calling from inside the other one will actually inherit the environment, or it'll sort of like know that delayed expansion is actually turned on. So we're not going to run this here today, but we are going to be using it inside of the script. So keep that in mind. Now, this function, this script anyway, is going to be a lot more complex. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. It's going to be using a lot of the terms and things that we've already learned so far in the series. So it'll be a nice review for you guys and something kind of challenging along the way. I don't know. It depends on what you think. But uh, hey, I'm going to create a main function. That's the most important thing right now. 
And remember, we aren't using set local or end local, so we can just go ahead and start programming. Now, the first order of business is actually getting information about what we're going to be working with. We can see that we have some strings here, and we're going to be working with those, because remember, our syntax was going to be create string name delimiter, if I can type, and then content. So when we have these things, we want to be working with each of them. So we initially have an array name, and that's going to be the first argument that we pass to it, but we're not actually going to be using this. I just want you guys to know that this is the variable that we're going to be using to access the variable, the array name. But we are going to want to keep track of the, rim, the delimiter. So we can create a string delimiter, and that's going to equal our second argument, and we're going to want to create a string for the content, and that's going to equal our third. Alright, now we actually are going to need to start to process the string and actually try and get information through it. So what we're going to actually do is count through the string and loop through it. But when we're working like that, we need to be able to keep track of where we are in the string, and we need to have some sort of like math mathematical numbers and things that represent what we're actually doing here. So we are going to need an offset, and that offset is what's going to allow us to grab pieces of the string. And I'll actually set it up over here, create string grocery list with a space, and I'll use apples, bananas, and meat. Alright, we can set offset to zero, and remember using our dash a tag, because it's a number, and we're going to set another one of these, index, to equal zero. Now, I've already tried to explain indexes to you guys, I don't know if it actually got across, but for each individual piece of the array, or the list that we're working with, each of them, each value is actually at a certain index. So remember, this is zero, this is one, and this is two, but the entire length of the array is three. So when we're trying to loop through the string and actually getting values and information, we're going to have to increment index each time. But uh, at this point, we're ready to actually start the loop. We can go through it. So we're going to do this by counting through it with a for loop. So we can use the for dash l tag, and the variable that I'm going to use is g, as usual, and in. And remember, when we're counting inside of our set, we have uh, the start value, the incremental value, like the step, and then where we're going to stop. So we want to start at 0. In the very beginning of the string, we're going to kink, uh, increment by 1, sorry, or keep going up. And then we're going to keep going until we get to content length. Now remember, we can access content length because it's already been created with our little create string function up here at the top. So now we'll actually get started. Now, we're going to be getting each individual character out of the string by accessing it with a substring. Because since we're looping through it, we actually have a position and then the position that we're at in the string, and then we can just add one onto it and sort of rip that piece out of the string. So we can set the character to equal the value of content, and we're going to be using our colon and tilde, remember, to get the substring out of there, with a dash dash g, or the 2% signs g, because that's the variable that we're using for our loop, and then 1. So that from the offset, or from the current position inside of the string, we'll get one more character from it. So that's going to return the character. Now we're going to actually want to test if the character that we're at is the delimiter. Because if it is the delimiter, we actually need to work with this portion of the string. So we can do this with a simple conditional statement. And we're going to be looking at the string form of these things. So we're going to use quotation marks and our double expansion here. If character is equal to string form of our delimiter, then what we can do just go ahead, start processing. Now, we need to actually get the length of where we are, because if we've run up to the delimiter, let's say we're at the beginning of the string, we're starting to process, offset is zero, and we, we're running through it, we're running through it, we're running through it, and then boom, we've hit the delimiter. So now we need to know what we're working with. If we do, uh, if we try and find the length of from the offset to that current delimiter, we need to be actually subtracting the current position from the offset. I'm sorry, we need to be subtracting the offset from the current position. So let's try this. We can go ahead and set, remember this is a little bit of an arithmetic here, so set length to equal the current position, subtract the value of the offset. Now offset is going to be manipulated in the for loop, so I'm going to be using the exclamation points or the delayed variable expansion here. And then what we'll do is actually set what we need to actually grab. So we can go ahead and set I think it's, uh, we're going to be using our array name, 
and then we're going to be using brackets to index this. And we're going to want to have the index here, and we can set that equal to the value of content. We're going to want to be grabbing the subposition out of here, offset, and length. All right. Well, now we look like we're in a pretty good spot, right? We've got everything we need. Well, sort of. We can even see that Notepad++ is telling us there's a problem here. Because if you see, if you take a look at what we're doing, we're actually using two variable expansions inside one of another. It's almost like we're nesting the variable values. And we can't really do that, because see, we've got the content variable, and then we're trying to access offset and length inside that. But we can't do that. We really can't access both of these variables inside each other because they're all th all of them are using variable expansion. Now we can't change the variable expansion order around either though because remember length and offset are being used and manipulated inside the for loop. So we've got ourselves in a predicament. But there is a way out. There is some hope here because Remember, if we actually were to create another subroutine or another label, or if, mind you, another function, we could use one more layer of variable expansion. So what I'm going to do is create one right up here. If I created something called set index, there's a little function, and what this will do is actually create a string, so it's almost as if we're setting a new variable here, in fact it, it really is. What we're going to be doing is using the first argument that we pass to it, that'll be the array name. We're going to be setting up the index, that'll be the second value that we pass to it. And we'll set that to be the string formation of the value of the third argument that we pass to it. Now the third argument is only going to be the string of this information here, it's not actually going to be the value of it. So let's try and set this up. If I were to call set index with our variable name or our array name, we're going to need to pass in the index as well, and we're going to pass in the string form of the content variable, and we're going to be using our colon and uh, tilde here, so remember we're using the notation for a substring, and here now we can supply the offset and the length. So now this entire thing gets passed in as percent three, and we actually get the value of it, and that's what's being sent to our create string function, so we actually are creating a good variable here. But now that we've actually got the information and we've split up the string, we need to actually increment and keep continuing our loop. So what we can do is set offset to our current position plus one, because remember we're at the delimiter, so we don't want to keep track of that anymore, we just want to skip right ahead, and then we can go ahead and set the index to the value of index plus one. Because we've already added one to it, we're ready to roll for the next one. And now we're practically done looping. But we've gotten up to a certain problem here, because we've gone up to our, our first delimiter, and we've gone up to our second delimiter right here, this, this other space. But there is no delimiter at the other end of the string. We don't actually know to continue. We haven't added that other piece in. So we've got a bit of a problem. But we can manipulate this too as well. Because if we're, if, when we're at the end of our string, we still know the very end of what we've got here and the current offset that we've been working with. So let's actually try this out. If we call set index one more time, what we can do is pass in the array name, the index that we're working with, just like before, because that's still the current, the current one that we're going to be looking at after the loop. And then we can just pass in content again, but we have some new variables to be retrieving stuff from. We're going to start from the offset. We're not inside the loop anymore, so I'm okay to be using the percent signs for variable expansion. And content length, because we're going to get from the last position that we looked at all the way to the end. Now we should be all set. We've gathered all of the variables that we need. So now what we'll do is actually set a length for the array. Because remember, we've got three items in here, so we want to be able to keep track of that as well. We'll actually set the variable name or the array name underscore length, just like we've done in our create string function before, we'll set it to be index plus one. Because remember the computer counts from zero, so apples is zero, bananas is one, and meat is two, but we're actually considering all this to be three, the length is three, we need to have our current index plus one. And now we can set the entirety of the array to equal the content that we initially were working with. Now we're practically done. 
But we still have to keep in mind that this is more of a global script, so we still have some variables left over that we don't really need. So let's get let's try and get rid of the stuff that we aren't really too concerned with on the off chance this isn't run in a script that doesn't have you know uh, set local and local with it. So I'm gonna set content to equal nothing. I'll set length to equal nothing, and you know I'll set offset character limiter and finally index so those are all the things that we need to worry about getting rid of so now we should be at a perfect spot we should be ready to roll I'll get rid of some of these comments and kind of clean things up a little bit and I think we're ready to go now if I were to create a new script create something new here and I'll just call mine script.bad as usual I'll overwrite whatever's there and I'll do a typical add echo off Set local, enable delayed expansion as usual, and go to our main function. The end of file. Oh. Now what we can do is go ahead and run. We're going to want to call this, remember, because we're inside of a uh, inside of a script. So we can call create array. I'll call it grocery list. I'll use a space for our delimiter. I'll use apples, bananas, and meat. Now that that's created, what I want to do is echo out the value of grocery list. Now this should give us everything. I'll get the command line ready and open for us, and I'll run script. Now we've got apples, bananas, and meat. We can actually figure out the length of this too, remember, with the underscore length. And we've got three. We've got three values here, apples, banana, and meat. Now we can index each individual piece of it too. Let's say we want apples, the first value. Zero, we've got apples. One, we've got bananas. And two, we've got meat. So this is fantastic. We can even change the delimiter as well to have it be um, a comma. Separate the values by a comma. That should be perfect. And we're still getting meat and everything just the way we should. We can change the limiter to be anything. We can work with any string that we'd like. And we're able to create an array anywhere we are. So, this is awesome. What we've done is actually built sort of like more functionality into Batch by using Batch. Just because it's such a weakly typed language, we're able to manipulate it in really, really specific ways. Because when we try and set a variable, we can even use a variable value and pass that in for the variable name. And that's what is exactly allowing us to, you know, work with it. Because normally in another programming language, you wouldn't actually be able to set the variable of one value, I'm sorry, the value of one variable as the name of another variable. So that's a little bit of a intertwined sort of conundrum thing that we've got going on, but it, it kind of allows us some more awesome functionality in Batch, and we can build some really more interesting stuff that allow us to work with this programming language in a bit of a better way. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. But before I finish this up, I do want to show you guys how we can make this into a more of a global tool. If I were to get into my system path or my user directory where I normally put all these things, what I'll do is I'll copy create array, this script that we just put, that we created anyway, and I'll move it into system32, paste it right in here, and we should be ready to rock. <laughs> Check that out. Now, Notepad++ doesn't see it anymore, but trust me, it still exists in our system path, so even when we move over to CMD, if I clear the screen, actually I'll just create a new session, drag this down for you guys, Create array isn't in here, but we can run our script, and that will allow us to get the information just like we'd normally be able to do. So thank you very much, guys. This is truly awesome. Uh, I was really happy and really pleased that I'm able to bring this to you guys because I think this is a great tool and a great script that allow us to uh, use a little bit more of Batch in a better way. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.